There may be times when you have to create several toolpaths with the same parameters, or you may need to create a different toolpath strategy, but use the same chains and the same tool. To copy a toolpath, you simply select the operation from the browser, right-click, and select Copy. Then, right-click and select Paste to add the copy to your list. Now you can select that copy, right-click, and select Edit, or double-click the operation to edit the parameters. Let's delete this operation and try something else. A faster way is to duplicate the operation. Select the operation from the browser, right-click, and select Duplicate. This is faster than the copy and paste method. It also has a hotkey. Select the operation from the browser and press Control and D, or Command D on the Mac. Let's delete those options and try something else. There is something a little bit better. It's called a derived toolpath. Derived toolpaths let you copy the parameters of an existing operation and use it in a different type of toolpath. But you can also use it for the same toolpath. It will bring all the geometry selections, tool selections, and the parameters like a copy. The best part is, after it creates the new operation, it opens it for editing. The next thing we need to do on our part is a finish cut for the inside and open pockets. So we need to make a copy of the 2D Contour Toolpath, select New Geometry, and change the bottom height offset amount. This time we will create a derived toolpath. In the browser, select the 2D Contour Toolpath, right-click your mouse, and slide down to Create Derived Operation. From the flyout window, mouse over 2D Milling. Here you can see all the different toolpath types we can copy our tool selection, cutting parameters, and chain selections into. For our purpose, select 2D Contour. Now we have our new 2D Contour toolpath that contains the same tool, parameters, and chains as the original operation, and it's open, ready to edit. There's nothing to select on the Tool tab since we're using the same tool. Let's go to the Geometry tab. Press the X next to the contour selection to delete the existing chain. This time, let's select the edge of the closed pockets and the edge of the open pockets. Now we have four chains selected. Notice the red arrows. They are an indication of which side of the chain the tool will be on. It's rare that Fusion would ever get this wrong, but you can force it to machine on the other side by clicking on the arrow. Of course, doing that on this part will destroy the workpiece. Let's go to the Heights tab. We want to make sure that our bottom height is set from the selected contours and that the offset is set to zero because we don't want to cut past the bottom of the pockets. Let's go to the Passes tab. Cutter compensation is still set to wear as before, so we won't change that. Enable multiple finishing passes. Set the number of finishing passes to 2 and the step over distance to 0 0.005. This will take two cuts across each selected chain. Let's go to the linking tab. Again, there's nothing for us to change here, so we will press OK. And there is our toolpath finishing the open and closed pockets with two passes. In this lesson, we learned about how to copy an operation, duplicate an operation, delete an operation, and create a copy using derived toolpath. We reselected the geometry for the open and closed pockets, selecting edges for the cutting boundary, and we took multiple finishing cuts across the profiles. Feel free to simulate this as we did in the previous lesson. Press Ctrl S to save the part, Command S on the Mac.